night, guys. It was actually turned out to be a fairly pleasant day, pleasant winter day here in the fall of 2021. It is unbelievably a sunny Tuesday morning. It is November 2nd, 2021. It looks like we will have frost on our pumpkin for the first time this year at Bugs in a Jar Farm uh, here on November 2nd. So I need to get out and make a big bouquet of zinnias. Uh, before I do that, uh, you know, I've been having a lot of fun with the COP26 dog and pony show. Uh, <laughs> providing great ironic Doomer humor uh, this week. No end of the Doomer humor at COP26. But I'm going to try to uh, try try to ignore the dog and pony show. So let's. I'm going to. I'm over here at the mainstream media playing. Speaking of Doomerville, here on the mainstream media, we're going to talk about sea level rise predictions, which is you know trying to predict where the sea level is going to be in the year 2100, guys. I don't know. Why don't you predict? Uh, where the stock market is going to be in the year 2100, uh, assuming there is a planet, and well, at least any humans on the planet, to give a damn where sea level rise is. You know, like predictions, like right now, if you go on the weather here in this town, it says it's a cloudy day with rain coming in. I'm looking at, out the window at bright blue sky and sunshine, while right now this computer is telling me it's cloudy outside my window. You know, these predictions of everything from global temperatures to sea level rise to the population of humans on the planet by 2100 or by, you know, even by 2030 still getting comments uh, as recently as yesterday from readers, listeners right here on Collapse Chronicles talking about how there will be no humans alive on this planet in the year 2030. Uh, <laughs> guys, this is a no-brainer prediction. There's going to be a hell of a lot more humans on this planet in the year 2030 than there are now in 2021. And, uh, what is it, three out of four of those humans are going to be born in sub-Saharan Africa and India. Now, 2100, guys, I'm not, uh, I, I'm not weighing in on a prediction of how many humans are going to be here in 2100, but how many of them are actually going to drown from rising seas? The, the question is not so much uh, how many people are going to drown, it's not that much harder, you know, a, a sea turtle can outrace uh, global sea level rise, but the question is, where are these sea turtles going to be laying their eggs? And the other question is, all of these humans moving from the coast, when they start running into other humans that already have their territory staked out, uh, this is the, the real question. But anyway, we have two articles. This was actually the number one story on the planet two days ago that I had socked away. So we're going to look at, we're going to talk to several climatologists about their predictions. And we're going to start with climate scientist Benjamin Strauss, uh, who is claiming that sea level is already guaranteed to rise by five feet this century, uh, according to climate scientist Benjamin Strauss. <clears throat> Take it away, Benjamin. Based on the amount of greenhouse gases humans have already added to the Earth's atmosphere, not talking about the emissions we're going to add. 
Based on the amount of greenhouse gases humans have already added to the Earth's atmosphere, the world is guaranteed to experience approximately five feet of sea level rise in the coming decades, climate scientist Benjamin Strauss told the Yahoo Climate Crisis podcast. Okay, take it away, Benjamin. <clears throat> Who is Benjamin Strauss? Strauss is the president and CEO of Climate Central, a nonprofit that tries to educate policymakers and the public about the threats posed by climate change. Okay, this is Benjamin Strauss on why you are doomed if you live anywhere near the coast. <clears throat> it's in that range, five feet plus or minus. It doesn't say plus or minus three feet or three millimeters. It's in that range, five feet plus or minus. And that's because we have already warmed the planet by around two degrees Fahrenheit or 1.1 Celsius. Think of it this way. If I dumped a truckload of ice in the middle of Phoenix, we all know it's going to melt. But it takes time to melt, and the same thing is true for the big ice sheets on Greenland and Antarctica and glaciers around the world. We turned up the thermostat. We have already heated the planet by a couple degrees, but they have only begun to respond by melting. And that is why we have all this extra sea level in the pipeline, in the pipeline already today. And it is enough, I am afraid to say, it's hard to imagine the long-term future of South Florida, let's say, with the sea level rise that is already in the pipeline, close, qu close quote. <clears throat> Strauss, who has testified before Congress on the, on the number of American houses that will be threatened due to sea level rise caused by climate change, noted that current estimates are that seas will rise by two to three feet, we're going to talk about this in the next article, by the end of the century and will continue rising in the decades that follow that. Yet, the fact that roughly five feet of sea level rise has already been baked into the planet's future for Strauss is even more incentive for the world to come together to prevent that figure from creeping even higher. Quote, I think we can help ourselves a lot by slowing down these changes, close quote. He said, uh, <laughs> yes, slowing down sea level rise. Good luck on that. So that is Benjamin Strauss. So let's hear from a couple of others. Uh, this is another article just came out today. This is Christian Bronion, a climate scientist at NASA's Goddard Institute. Quote, we do need to back away from the coast, climate scientist warns. <clears throat> All right, let's hear this spin on the mainstream media today. Sea levels will continue to rise over the next century as a result of climate change, and this could drastically alter the lives of the 127 million people in the U.S. who live in coastal areas. So this is only looking at the United States. 127 million. Okay, there's 334 million Americans 
127 million of them living along the coast. Uh, so this is what climatologist Christian Brannian, this is his look into the crystal ball of the collapse of the coastlines of the U.S. <clears throat> we do need to back away from the coast and I think what we need to do is actually proactively set up areas with affordable housing before the real estate market catches up and fully understands the risks on the coast. Too many human beings living on the coast right now are exposed to exorbitant amounts of climate risks. Close quote. The risks that coastal communities face include threats of, quote, sunny day flooding and storm surges that will be more frequent and more extreme, and a higher prevalence of flooding not only displaces residents, but also incurs high economic costs to rebuild. The extent of sea level rise, yes, <clears throat> the extent of sea level rise depends on how quickly nations can reduce and sequester greenhouse gas emissions that cause polar ice to melt and waters to swell through thermal expansion. Um, see, th th this whole notion of thermal expansion is uh, never talked about, and they really don't explain the idea of thermal expansion as the oceans warm, the waters literally expand in addition to the uh, melting ice. You know, and of course, this statement in this article you know, kind of, um, this is the reason that so many uh, of these little apocalyptic hopium uh, Green New Deal supporters uh, talk about, you know, at this point, if we eliminated all emissions tomorrow, sure, would that help? Yeah. Uh, you know, everything at this point, but anybody who thinks what they're talking about at COP26, even if uh, it wasn't all blah, 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 uh, it is going to make any difference at this point. And of course, nowhere in these articles is it talking about methane releases from the melting permafrost and the, you know, the shallow Arctic seas? Nowhere in this discussion is the methane bomb that we have already set off. There's not a damn thing we're going to do about that. There's nothing we can do. And all of the emissions reductions in the world are not going to touch the methane bomb. All of the emissions reductions in the world at this point are going to do nothing to keep the Amazon rainforest from tipping uh, into savannah. Uh, you know, the, the most it's going to do is turn a sledge, a a nine pound sledgehammer into a eight pound sledgehammer. It's all crap, people. All right. So what are the uh, these predictions from the UN? Okay, under low greenhouse gas emission scenarios, and, and, and I would say even no, under low greenhouse gas emission scenarios, which is the, the, the hope guiding the COP26 climate conference currently underway, under low greenhouse gas emission scenarios, sea levels will rise between one and two feet 
according to the UN's report on climate scientists, those levels increased to two to three feet under high emission scenarios, most alarming, you know, going to that alarmist we just heard from over there, uh, most alarming was that <clears throat> climate scientists are not able to rule out sea levels exceeding six feet of rise by 2100, which would be catastrophic. So let's hear from Catherine Hayhoe, chief scientist at the Nature Conservancy. <clears throat> Take it away, Catherine. Quote, we are all at risk, and we, I, I, I love the word salad in this sentence, <clears throat> and we know that cutting emissions is absolutely essential to avoid the even more dangerous impacts if we don't, close quote. There, there you go. That was quite the... Uh, the ballerina pirouetting around this whole subject. We know that cutting emissions is absolutely essential to avoid the even more dangerous impacts if we don't. So, all right, if we so if we don't cut emissions, we're more doomed than if we do cut emissions. We're, we're doomed no matter what we do. Okay, we are, we are doomed. We're doomed uh, no matter what we do. But if we want to be, if we don't want to be more doomed than doomed, we cut emissions. There you go. All right. But let's get a reality check for climate scientist Branian, who grew up in Houston and has family living in New Orleans. The issue of rising sea levels is personal. <clears throat> Quote, I have been encouraging my own family in New Orleans to move for many years. But like many people, they are attached to their communities. They're attached to their homes. They're really invested in staying where they are. I think we need to give people the opportunity to leave. I think we need to give them options and have community-led retreat. I love that term for the uh, collapse. Community-led retreat where we give both options over a period of time Maybe in 10 years, they're not ready to move, but maybe in 20 years, they may be. Close quote. We shall see. Uh, one thing <clears throat> that Branian and Hayho both stressed is that extreme weather events will impact communities differently in terms of displacement, resilience, and rebuilding after natural disasters, these challenges prevent, quote, an uncomfortable conversation that we are going to have to have more and more. <laughs> hey, ho said, yes, an uncomfortable conversation that we are going to have to have more and more, and uh, we will continue having this uncomfortable conversation more and more on Collapse Chronicles. Uh, it looks like uh, I'm getting a couple of new subscribers each day over here, so a few people are willing to uh, start facing up to uh, how doomed we really are. But I've got to wrap this up uh, because I have to keep uh, clearing my flood control uh, channel around the back of my house. I'm, uh, we dodged the bullet last week, uh, and I am continuing 
to move ahead uh, routing the floodwaters around my house. So uh, this is how deep right here, this is where the water was in this house in 2018, this line pretty much up to this picture of uh, Mother Nature getting her brains blown out by global industrial civilization. This is pretty much the line that uh, this house looked like in 2018, I understand. Get out there and sandbag your house while you still can. Bye, guys. This little dog. That wasn't that bad.